booktube it's kim at middle of the book march and welcome to one of my favorite videos of the year is the worst of the worst for 2020 i shouldn't be so happy about this but um geez the uh, the whole year wasn't great for reading um but and there are some books that i dnf'd and i wanted to talk about those uh, today these are the DNF superlatives, and I have 10 books that I wanted to tell you that I DNF them and why. And um, if you're not into the negativity and you're not into hearing bad reviews, that's all right. If you don't approve of me doing this, that's okay too. You don't have to watch my video, but maybe I, maybe I have this weird twisted sense of this is wicked fun. And honestly, you know, nobody likes every book and not every book is a good book. So let's get going, shall we? So, um, again, like I said, I have 10 DNFs that I'm going to talk about in this video. And the first one is the longest book and the longest it took for any action. And a book, a giant long book that bored me to tears was Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. I was buddy reading this with Freddie at Sluggish Reader and it, it was just not successful for me. Um, the book, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Jonathan Strange took hundreds of pages to appear in the narrative. I think I got to page 300 and the book, if I remember correctly, my hardcover was around 800 and something or 900 pages. This is a big monster of a book. 300 pages, I should not have been bored, but I was, and this is a beloved book in a lot of different places, all kinds of people who like fantasy like the book, kind of a magical story, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of magical realism, fantasy, all of that stuff. No, I was bored to tears, and then I read later that this book was a compilation of a bunch of smaller chunks of narrative whether she in, whether she intended on writing a couple of novels or some stories i think they were stories that she strung together it did not succeed in my opinion and i dnf'd it about a third of the way through um the next one is one of the most beloved books ever in the history of reading um is and i'm sorry is anne of green gables by L.M. Montgomery. Oh, <laughs> I probably should have read this book as a young person or a child. I did not. So I tried picking it up at the beginning of this year. I could not stand the character of Anne. She irritated and annoyed me. The child would not shut up. Yeah, I know her orphan background, but I just was not a fan of this story and promptly DNF'd it. Maybe got through pages, page 50 to 75, I don't remember. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Uh, the next one was a new release that I was happy to DNF uh, early and quickly, and that was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I really wanted to like it. This was supposed to be a gothic horror literary fiction um Maybe a little bit like um, The Yellow Wallpaper, uh, maybe a little bit of Rebecca somewhere thrown in there. It was not. I think I DNF'd it at 50 pages. I thought the writing was terrible. It was very cliche. It was very stereotypical. I just was not into it at all and gave it away as quickly as I could. The most complex novel and one of, one of my personal disappointments for this year is Paradise by Toni Morrison. I got through half of the book. I, I've i got a couple of theology degrees and I was confused. This book is chock full of religious allegory, metaphors, um, description. Uh, it was so dense and heavy with it. If you did not have a Christian religion background, I don't know how you could have understood much of the book. It started off so well. It it started off with a, a mass murder at a former mansion. Um, uh, some millionaire owned this mansion. They turned it into a convent. It became a home for, for women who needed help. I, 
I was blown away by the beginning and then all of a sudden it slid to so many different characters, so much heavy, dense religious symbolism, so much to say about God and faith and what paradise really means, inclusion versus exclusion. And then by the middle of the book, I, I should have drawn some sort of graph and some sort of pie chart to keep everything straight. And the amount of allegory in that book was so enormous that it would have taken me forever to read. I tried to read it and do the audio at the same time way back in the beginning. That did not work for me. And unfortunately, I DNF'd it about halfway through. Um, the next one is the copycat novel of the year, and it is Caleb's Crossing by Geraldine Brooks. I read, um, I started to read this for a novel, supplementary novel for the These Truths Read Along, and I didn't like the writing. I, I thought it was just contrived, and she was trying to talk in the voice of a young girl, 12-year-old girl. That did not work for me, so I, I put it aside. I DNF'd it. It was okay. Well, then I picked up a book called The Widow's War, and I, I just blanked on the author. I think it's Sally Gunning or Sally Cabot or Sally Gunning Cabot. I'll, the, the picture will be there. And I started to read that book instead, which I really enjoyed. And then all of a sudden I realized this sounds familiar. It's set in the 1600s in Puritan, New England, um, a whaling community. Uh, I... I got deja vu. And then I started to realize there were actual specific terms and names in this novel that were similar to Caleb's Crossing. And so I looked at both of the books and Widow's War was written first. And so I, I put this in my wrap up. I, I did a thing on plagiarism. And I was like, why would Geraldine Brooks, a Pulitzer Prize winning author, be plagiarizing a different novel? Did she do it on purpose? Was it accidental? Did she think nobody else would read Widow's War? I don't know. But I, I just did not like the writing and I just did not appreciate the the blatant similarities of the two novels. So DNF to Caleb's Crossing. Um, one of the most boring books with a great premise, a great idea is um, At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Posterino. It was translated from the Italian, I believe. And I, I apologize, I don't have the translator's name. The picture will be there and I'll put the translator's name at the bottom of my screen. This, the idea was these were German women who were basically forced into being food tasters for Adolf Hitler. So they were bused to this facility every day and bused home and they were in charge of trying his food before he did to make sure nothing was poisoned. And there were a group of young women, many of their husbands or the men in their families were at the war. And they weren't really given a choice. They were given benefits to doing these jobs. And so the, the idea was fascinating to me. I, w I was waiting to read this. The writing was just meh. And the story just did not pick up anywhere. It was boring. And it was too bad because it was a translated novel. I was looking forward to that. I was looking forward to reading a novel with this storyline. And I was just bored and unhauled that book altogether. Um, the next book is a memoir. Um, a weird one. And it, it received the What the Hell Did I Just Read prize. This is The Argonauts from Maggie Nelson. It's a very short memoir talking about the dynamics of her family. She was married to a non-binary partner. Uh, she became a mother. There, she discusses her marriage. Um, but it, the book was written in these weird chunks. And on the side margins of the book, she had a lot of different statistics and facts and um, information. Uh, it was all over. It was a hot mess all over the place. And I understand what she was trying to do. And I really appreciated the attempt, but it just was not successful at all. And I know a whole bunch of people love that book, but you know, what the hell, what the hell was that anyway? <laughs> um, the next one is the, the blue blood, you know, Mayflower literary elite. I don't even know if I'm making any sense. Um, elitist memoir that I had read probably ever. And it is Blue Nights by Joan Didion. This was a memoir, a very short one, 
talking about the sudden death or not so sudden death of her daughter. Joan Didion lost her husband, Dominic Dunn, extremely suddenly from a heart attack. And she wrote a book on that called The Year of Magical Thinking. I think that's it. Picture will be here. That book I loved. That was so raw and filled with how she processed grief, loneliness, all of it. This one, Blue Nights, her daughter was a secondary or if not tertiary character in this memoir. Joan was talking about her, the connection she had. She was name dropping all over the place. She was talking about the possessions in her home and her daughter's home by name brands. She was discussing California, which is where they were from. And I'm like, this is just like reading the, reading the misguided memoir of a wealthy white woman. And I was, again, looking for a book dealing with the grief and the loss of her daughter. Maybe it was just too painful for her to get into detail. Or maybe the last half of the book, there was more material on her feelings over that. But I just was not impressed whatsoever. And I found it extremely elitist and exclusion, exclusionary, ex, exclusionary, exclusive, exclusion <laughs> Ex never mind you I think you know what I'm trying to say exclusivity whatever I just hated the book put it aside got rid of it um the book that I was saddest to DNF is called The Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris this was a book written many years ago about her experiences joining a monastery she was a lay leader in her church and her faith tradition she joined and was a student at a monastery for many years off and on. Uh, there are times that she stayed there. There are times that she was a visiting scholar. That's the part that fascinated me, but I at least half of the book discussed her artist inclinations, her the life of her and her creativity, her art, the relationship and the dynamics with her husband, some of their struggles with mental illness, and then on every other chapter, it would be talking about um, different conversations she had with different monks, their personalities. That was not the book I was looking for. I was looking for, tell me the story of how you lived with this, this order of monks. Tell me the story of what you learned about your faith. Tell me the story about how that experience changed your life. And that is not what I got out of that book. And I got, I think, halfway through, and I was just so depressed and sad that I put it down. It's like, I can't do it. I can't. I cannot power through this book. So that became a DNF, and I unhauled it, unfortunately. Okay, the very last one, the most satisfying DNF of the year. The book that I was thrilled to throw across the room. I think I may have even thrown it away because I didn't want anybody else to get it in a used book haul or whatever. And that's uh, Paris Trout by Pete Dexter. This was the first book, unfortunately, in the Barter Hordes Backlist Book Club. I think Paris Trout is a Pulitzer winner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the Pulitzer or the National Book Award. Again, I'll put the details at the bottom of the screen. I got halfway through Paris Trout and just chucked it. Hated this book. This is the story of a small town white racist sociopath named Paris Trout. He's basically got control of the entire town financially and culturally. It is a town with a mix of an African-American section of town and a white section of town. Clearly very stereotypical. The whites are rich, the blacks are not. Paris Trout is a small time loan shark that gives out loans to p folks in the black community. Um, the beginning of the book is the story of how he ends up shooting and eventually killing a young girl. I think she's 12, um, a young black girl. And what that does, what the reverberations are throughout the town, not just the black part of town, but also where Paris lives. He's a pretty wealthy landowning man who is ignored by the authorities in the town. Things that he has done and said is kind of overlooked. The very beginning of the book starts off very well with discussing race relations and racism, gives a very um, good visual picture of the black part of town versus how the whites look at the blacks in town. 
there's a, a really great storyline of family dynamics in the black families. Um, and then we go back to learn more about Paris Trout. He is, he was married late in life. Um, all of a sudden, after the, the murder of this young black girl, it becomes a legal drama, a legal novel. However, Paris is such an irredeemable character, highly racist, cruel, sadistic. There is description of gratuitous rape of his own wife. Uh, he is severely mentally ill, whether he's paranoid, schizophrenic, whatever it is. He keeps his wife in lockdown under horrific conditions. He follows her, he checks up on her. After the murder of this young black girl, the, the black storyline disappears from the novel. And there is a gross undercurrent of racism, even in the writing, and blatant misogyny. Towards the end of the novel, I, I didn't read the last half, but I did read into the conclusion of the book. I would have hated it had I finished it. And when I hate a book that much, I start to look into the author's background. And the author has a very shady background as well. He only started writing because he was uh, severely injured in a barroom beating, which he kind of exacerbated. And he couldn't do anything else. He was a journalist at one point. He couldn't do anything else. So he decided, why don't I try to write a novel? And that's what he did. He wrote a few novels and this one sucked. Very racist, very misogynistic. The story was not redeemable using all of that tone of language and description. I was offended that there wasn't more exploration into the black families in the story. And I was happy. I honestly might have thought about burning it in my backyard, but I was happy to throw away this book. Um, a lot of people like it. A lot of people love it. It's looked at as a modern classic, if you want to give it that designation. Pulitzer Prize winning novel. Um, but no, just no. That's it for me for the, the DNFs of the year. The My least favorite books or the worst books for me for the year 2020. Um, go ahead and fight me in the comments or yell at me, whatever you want to do. Tell me what you think about any of the books I talked about. And give me your opinions. I'm looking forward to it, I think. So yeah, that'll be it for me today. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more of me next week because I've got a few more end of year videos and I'm on vacation so I have nothing else to do but make videos and read. Hope you guys are reading something better than what this list contained and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.